Do you find yourself wishing there was a way in Outlook to group like items, but without having to put them into folders? You have that option with a tool called Categories, and it can be very helpful for organizing your email. I'll show you how to use Outlook Categories today on Tuesday Tech Training. Hello, and welcome to today's Tuesday Tech Training. My name is Jennifer Stewart. I'm the owner of Gateway Productivity, and I'm a tech and productivity trainer. Today, I'll be teaching you how to use categories in Outlook. For those who aren't familiar, categories is similar to tags. You may have heard about tags before in Facebook and things like that, where you can assign a certain tag to something, and then when you're ready, you can filter to just that tag and see the things associated with it. Categories work the same way. Categories have colors associated with them in Outlook, which makes it really nice on a calendar or even in your email to quickly see things that you have and what category they're in. But then you can also give them a name. And then when the time is right, you're ready to filter by those categories. In Outlook, most people can put categories on emails, calendar items, or contacts. The one exception to that is if you are using Outlook to bring in a Gmail account, Yahoo account, something like that, something that's not based in Microsoft, then you probably won't be able to use categories in your emails. The reason for that is the emails that are being brought in from other accounts don't have categories at those accounts. And usually you're syncing between let's say Gmail and Outlook. And if you're syncing, then Gmail doesn't have categories, and so then categories are not available. If you're using Microsoft 365 and you have your email flow through Microsoft, you'll have no problem and you can categorize your emails. This is also true if you're at a big company and they use what's called an exchange server through Microsoft. We'll start by seeing where categories live. As a reminder, when you're in your inbox, if you are someone who is pulling from Gmail, say, or Yahoo, you may not be able to see these little categorizing buttons here. Let's see what that looks like. This is a Gmail account. And if I go in there, you see how the categories disappear. This one's in gray, so I don't have that as an option. Again, that's because it's coming in from Gmail and they're syncing back and forth. And Gmail doesn't have categories, so you're not able to add them here in Outlook. If you're someone who has this situation, don't expect to be able to use categories in your email, but you can certainly use them in calendar and in contacts. Go ahead and watch the whole video because everything I show can be applied in each area. So even though I'm showing how to categorize in email, you'll be able to do that same thing in the calendar items and in your contacts. Now that we know categories is up here in the upper right, and it may be in two places, it may be in one, depending on how your, this is called a ribbon, depending on how this ribbon is set up. It may be in this tags area, as I said, it's very similar to tags, or it may have its own section, or it may be in both. You can use it in either place, it's exactly the same. When you click on that, this will show you all the categories you currently have available. You can see that I have not set up my categories yet. That's why they have the names of the colors instead of actual categories that I would use. Now let's take a look at what this all categories is. This is where you can do all of your editing of categories. You can see here, you can create new ones, rename the existing ones, delete ones that you don't want. You can change the colors of them and you can also set up shortcut keys. You have a couple options when doing categories. You can set them as you go, or you can create them before you start to put them on the emails. I find it easier to have a plan in advance and know what categories I want, so I'm going to do that now. Some things to think about when you're planning your categories are what do you plan to use these for? Are you going to sort emails? Are you going to use them in your calendar to see what you have coming up? Are you going to use them in your contacts to know where people are coming from? Any of these is fine, but you want to know in advance what you're going to use them for because you don't want to create so many that it becomes cumbersome to use your categories. As a business owner, I like to use categories for my calendar items, especially for things such as marketing and clients and prospects. So I can quickly look at my calendar 
to see what types of things I have going on. In the same way, I can use those in my email to see what types of things are happening in my email. If you're working at a large company, you might have one for each department. That would work through all of the different parts of Outlook. For instance, if you had the accounting department as a category, that would make sense in your email. That would make sense if you have frequent meetings with them. You could have that in your calendar. And it would also make sense to have that for the contacts that are in the accounting department. As an example for a business owner, using my example that I talked about before with marketing, I can have emails that have to do with marketing. I can have appointments that have to do with marketing. Say I'm having an appointment with my marketing contractor. And then I can have the contacts that have to do with marketing. I can drill down to all the contacts that I know that have to do with web development and all the different types of marketing that are out there. I'll do a couple different kinds of categories so that you can understand how to use them. For my blue category, I will make this Microsoft because I have meetings with Microsoft, I have people in my contacts that are from Microsoft and I get emails from Microsoft. So we will rename the blue category by clicking the rename, rename button. You have to pay close attention because it then puts the blue category in blue and I can hit backspace to delete it and put in Microsoft. Once I'm done renaming, I can click anywhere in the white space and it will save it. I'll make my green category clients. So again, we'll click rename. It'll change this to blue so that I can delete it. And I'll name this clients because green for me means money. And for one more example, I'll make my orange category be planning because I have planning emails, planning meetings, and then I have a team for planning. So I'll rename this as planning. And if you don't wanna hit backspace, as you saw, I can just start typing and it will replace it. And again, click in the white space and that will save it. At this point, I could choose to get rid of these other categories and add them back later as actual categories, but we won't worry about that at the moment. Don't forget to click OK when you're leaving the screen, otherwise you will lose your changes. Now let's look at how to assign a category to emails, calendar items, and contacts. What's nice about Outlook is you don't have to have the email open to get to these items. You can do it when the email is fully open. You see categorize up here, but then you also have that as an option when you're in your inbox view. And even if you have the reading pane on or off, this will work. You can go to categorize and choose the category that you had set. You see it gives a little blue icon here and it also puts it right here in the email. And if you're not in the reading pane view, you can see here when I move my picture, it has the icon and the label because it has more space. If you don't have the categories column and you would like to, you can right click in the bar at the top, anywhere in here, any, it doesn't matter where you are there, and you can use the field chooser and find category, click and drag it up to where you want it in the list of columns. You can also add multiple categories. So let's say this one here is both planning and it's clients. You can see here in this view, you can see both labels and the icons. We'll go back to our reading pane view to see what that looks like. And now you can see they're labeled here in the email, but here you just have the colored icons. So you'll want to make sure you use icon colors that resonate with you and make sense to you. So let's say you made a mistake. Let's say I had put this in planning, but it actually wasn't. I can go here to categorize and all I have to do is click the option a second time to remove it. Lastly, if you have multiple categories set up and you want to remove them all at once, you can go to categorize and at the very top, it's kind of hiding here, is clear all categories. That will take them all away at once. Let's see these steps in the calendar. When you're in the calendar and you start a new appointment, your categorizing again is up here at the top and it works the same way. Click the one that you want. Let's say this is a planning meeting. It puts this here up at the top and we'll call this a test meeting and we'll have it be at 8 a.m. 
Once I save this, you can see that that calendar item is the color of the category. Let's open that back up and see what it looks like if we add multiple categories. We'll put clients on there as well. Again, save and close. And it puts the most recently added category in the month view. Let's see if we change this to a different view. Let's say just the week, what that looks like. Here you can see a little bit cleaner that it has the most recent category, but then it has a tiny little icon that indicates that it's also another category. In the contacts or people area in Outlook, this all works the same way. When you have a new contact, you can go to categorize. It may be small or if it's full size, you can see it looks just like normal and you can categorize this as a client. And with this one, it goes all the way across with the color. If you have multiple categories, it will break it up and show it in blocks. When you save the contact, what you see will depend on your view. Contacts has multiple different views. So here I have a list and you can see it has the categories just like the email. But if your view is different, let's say it looks like this, or it looks like the business cards, you may not have those categories in there. So you can play around with the views and get it the way you want if you need to see those categories. To change and add categories, it works just the same as it did in email. And this is true for the calendar as well. You can always go in here and unchoose something that shouldn't be there. And then you can add other things that should be. Lastly, we'll look at how to completely delete a category. You'll go back to where we were at the beginning where you click up here and you go to all categories. And here is where you can choose one and choose the delete. It will ask you once more if you would like to. And it says that deleting this category removes it from the list, but does not affect previously categorized items. So yes, I will remove that. And this category has been assigned to something. That's why it says not in master category list. So if I click OK and I go back up here, it does not give it as an option in my list. But if I go to all categories, I can see it because it is assigned to something. There are a couple other neat things built in with categories. The first is the quick click. And so if we click here and go to set quick click, that is if you wanted to just quickly click on an email and it would automatically choose a category. So I'm going to set that to be clients and I'm going to click OK and that'll save it. And you see nothing changes here because I haven't done it yet. But if I go to the categories and you see this little tiny icon, if I click there, you can see it chooses clients because that's the quick click that I chose. In the reading pane view, in order to use the quick click, you need to make this area showing all the emails big enough to be able to see the category column. You can see here, there's no option. That little tiny box does not pop up anywhere when I have it shrunk like this. So if you grab this, open it up to the point where categories has its own column right here, now you can do the quick click because you've got this little tiny box that shows up and I can click on that to assign. The other great thing built in with categories and usually the reason you want to use categories is to sort your email. To do that, you can click this section right here that says by date and you can instead change that to categories. Now you can see it has the ones with no category, then my clients category, and then my Microsoft category. And it's doing those, it's doing the categories in alphabetical order. Another way you may eventually want to use categories is paired with the Outlook rules. Now we have another video that I will put the link to about Outlook rules. In there, I don't say anything about categories, but it will teach you how to use the rules and you can apply categories instead of folders. So for instance, if an email comes in from a specific person and you will always have that categorized as a client or as a certain department, you can set up a rule that Outlook will categorize those items as they come in so that you don't constantly have to do it yourself. Have you had a light bulb moment from this training? If so, please let me know in the comments below. And if you have a question, you can put that in the comments as well and I'll get back to you as soon as possible.
You can also give the video a thumbs up or you can share it with someone you think could benefit from the information. And be sure to subscribe by clicking the red button below. Once you do, you'll have the option to click a bell icon. This would give you a notification each time a new video is posted. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.